And here is the Writer's Almanac for Monday. It's the 6th of May, 2019. It was on this day, 1835, the first issue of the New York Herald was published. It was the poor man's paper who sold for a penny, but it hired foreign correspondents. It covered finance, arts, theater, sports, and society events. And unlike other papers, it was nonpartisan. And it published a Paris edition which survives today in the form of the International Herald Tribune. It was on this day in 1836, Samuel Colt patented a multi-shot revolving cylinder revolver, enabling the gun to be fired multiple times without reloading. It's the birthday of Freud, Sigmund Freud, born in the town of Freiburg, Austria, 1856. He became a doctor. He was Jewish, and Jews were not welcome in the field of medicine then, so he went into psychology. And he was interested in the problem of hysteria, mostly suffered by women, who were subjected to horrible treatment, sometimes surgical removal of the uterus. And Freud tried hypnosis instead, which led him to the idea of using talk to treat mental illness. He took his wife's couch, he covered it with a rug, had his patients lie down, look at the wall, he sat behind them, and he let them talk freely about their fears, their past traumas. He wrote about the existence of the unconscious in his book, The Interpretation of Dreams, theorizing that three distinct parts strive for control over our actions. The id, which is driven by instinct, sexual desire, hunger, and so forth. The ego, which negotiates between the id and the reality around us. And the superego, which imposes moral values upon the ego. Conflict between the three personality elements results in anxiety. Therapists today argue about Freud's theories, but his influence on the culture was great. Penis envy, the Oedipus complex, phallic symbols, the Freudian slip. And most people accept the basic idea that our minds are capable of repressing traumatic experiences and feelings and that there is benefit in talking about them. It was on this day in 1935, Franklin D. Roosevelt created the Works Progress Administration, which over the next eight years employed eight and a half million out-of-work people building roads, bridges, parks, and public buildings. It's the birthday of Orson Welles, Kenosha, Wisconsin, 1915, who at the age of 23 produced a radio adaptation of H.G. Wells' story of Martian invasion, War of the Worlds, that was so realistic that it caused mass hysteria. Two years later, he made his most famous movie, Citizen Kane. Here's a poem for today by Anita S. Pouliar, Sounds of Morning. Sleep has infused his brain with energy transformed into words. I watch his mouth moving, his disheveled silvery hair, his familiar faraway look. I try to stay focused while he lectures on theories of black holes, the ninth planet, evolutionary development, how the brain works, religion, politics, and ultimately solutions not always pretty, squinting in the pale light of early morning, I silently review our numbers years behind, years ahead. Our feet touch, rustle the sheets as he decodes the puzzle of the very earth I simply tread upon. 
I used to wonder why he shares these early morning rambles with a woman who hasn't read a science book since sixth grade, until one morning he pauses and says, Say something. I raise my eyebrows, ask, Why? I like hearing your voice, he says tenderly. A poem, Sounds of Morning, by Anita S. Pullier, from her collection, Sounds of Morning, published by Finishing Line Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac for Monday the 6th of May, 2019. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>